If your website uses Polyfill IO, remove it immediately. I created the Polyfill service project, but I never owned the domain name and I have had no influence over its sale. It's hard to know how scary something like this is until we see the impact. And although that tweet was in February, we've just now seen what they're doing. And what they're doing is terrifying. Hundreds of thousands of websites from Intuit to JSTOR to Hulu have been pwned by this change. That's insane. And we need to talk about why and how severe this is. So let's go back to the thread from the original creator and then we'll go through how we got here in the first place. No website today requires any of the polyfills in the polyfill IO library. Most features added to the web platform are quickly adopted by all major browsers with some exceptions that generally can't be polyfilled anyways, like web serial and web Bluetooth. Domains that serve popular third-party scripts are a huge security concern. The team at googleanalytics.com, for example, could read or modify almost any website in the world like gov.uk or wellsfargo.com. If you own a website, loading a script implies an incredible relationship of trust with the third party. Do you actually trust them? Well, after what we've seen here, no. There's some real scary stuff going on here. If you're not familiar with the risk here, as soon as you embed a script into your website, as long as that's part of the HTML, that script now has the ability to modify anything the user sees and does, which is terrifying. Even with all of the cross-site scripting stuff, that we've been introducing in the browser for a while now to make things safer. The idea of embedding a script tag on your site from a place you don't own, even trust especially, that's terrifying. So why are we talking about this right now? Polyfill IO. If you're not familiar with Polyfill IO or polyfills in general, Polyfill IO was a source of a bunch of polyfills for people who wanted their websites to work with old browsers. So if you were using a bunch of new modern JavaScript things, you could embed the Polyfill IO like packages into your browser, into your website is just like HTML tags. And then your website could use modern JavaScript features in browsers that didn't necessarily support them. This was a big deal back in the day when every browser was really far behind on the standards before Chrome came out and forced everyone to embrace standards, which I know you guys don't like when I say that, but it's reality. Interesting that this link now contains malicious content that may cause technical harms. We've decided to preserve the content for security research purposes. Please exercise caution when clicking links downloading releases, or otherwise interacting with this repo. Has anyone else ever seen this on GitHub? Because this is insane. I've never seen this before. But I want to view the repo. Polyfill.io is a service which makes web development less frustrating by selectively polyfilling just what the browser needs. Polyfill.io reads the user agent header of each request and it returns polyfills that are suitable for the requesting browser. Cool thing. I see why a lot of people like this. A lot of people just blindly embedded Polyfill.io on their websites with their JavaScript tag which is terrifying for a whole bunch of reasons, especially because the person who created Polyfill IO did not own the domain. As they said in the tweet here, they're one of the original creators of Polyfill. They created the Polyfill service, but they never owned the domain name and they had no influence over its sale. The thing here that's been deleted was somebody saying that Polyfill IO, the domain, got sold to some sketchy third party. And since then, they've been doing some really not great stuff. What is that not great stuff though? Well, thankfully, Rich linked this. Polyfill supply chain attack hits 100,000 websites. The new Chinese owner of the popular Polyfill.js project injects malware into more than 100,000 websites. That's insane. That's actually insane. And they could do that just by buying the domain and then serving sketchy JavaScript through it instead. Apparently somebody launched a DDoS attack against their infrastructure, them being the company that covered this. We've scaled our capacity. However, now the attack has shifted to our payment provider, which has temporarily suspended their service to us. We are working with them to get this restored ASAP. Apologies for the inconvenience. That's terrifying that this poor fucking Sunset company is being attacked for posting this. They also are updated earlier that Google's already started blocking Google ads for e-commerce sites that are using Polyfill IO. Because again, if you're using Polyfill IO and you have these sketchy JS files, they can do anything on the site. And if Google is serving ads on your site and this other JavaScript is running, it could be used by these companies to spam Google ads and trigger a bunch of events they don't mean to trigger and fundamentally break Google's ad network. So now they're just blocking anybody who has the Polyfill IO domain in their script tags to lower the amount of risk. Some notable users of Polyfill IO are things like JSTOR, Intuit, and the World Economic Forum. It's not just small little websites. Like JSTOR is massive. This is where so much academic research is put. It is a site that academics use literally every single day for hours a day to go through important research and papers. The fact that this has an issue with Polyfill IO and that anybody using the site could be compromised now is terrifying. It's actually terrifying. And also Intuit is, as people are saying in chat, 
similarly big deal because Intuit is a tax company. I use Intuit for my management of a bunch of the things for the channel, and they have access to a lot of my financial information. I'm now scared to go to the Intuit website because Polyfill.io might scan all of my bank documentation. If I don't go there, they can't, but it's the, the moment I go to that website, I'm now at risk. In February this year, a Chinese company bought the domain and the GitHub account. Since then, the domain was caught injecting malware on mobile devices via any site that was embedding from CDN Polyfill.io. Any complaints were quickly removed from the GitHub repo. Apparently, they were deleting the complaints people were raising in the repo as far back as February. So this tweet from the creator of the Polyfill server saying to not use it anymore for the or, or for this project. And I read a tweet that you wrote that you gave a company called Funnel the rights to keep it open source and to run a domain service called Polyfill.io. This is the, the tweets that got deleted. Been in discussion with Funnel for many months now, and they will be the new maintainers and operators of the GitHub repo, which remains open source. And as of the 24th of February, they're starting to provide the service for Polyfill.io. I then looked up the company Funnel to see what it was all about. Funnel says made in the USA on their website, but there's Chinese on the site and the main contact page is also in Chinese. And Funnel appears to represent, I'm not familiar with what this is. In their terms, we are not responsible for viruses and you must not introduce them. We do not guarantee that Polyfill.io will be secure or free from bugs or viruses. You're responsible for configuring your information technology, computer programs, and platforms to access Polyfill.io. You should use your own virus protection software. <laughs> Am I correct in that this project that we don't give any alerts when we change the terms? Am I correct that there's no obligation on the service to give any advance notice when they change those terms? Is it really true that a project like Polyfill.io, which is used by so many web services, is being taken over by a company called Funnel that seems to have some connection to China? Based on the timing of Jake's tweet, I'm assuming the hosting has already gone over to them as of today. Absolutely terrifying. It's clear that this acquisition was so they could spread malware. The domain Polyfill.io is now a C name to Polyfill.io bsclink.cn, which appears to be run on Baishan Cloud. The Polyfill code is dynamically generated based on the HTTP headers, so multiple attack vectors are likely. Sansec decoded one particular malware, see below, which redirects mobile users to a sports betting site using a fake Google Analytics domain, googleanalytics.com. The code has specific protection against reverse engineering, and it only activates on specific mobile devices at specific hours. It also does not activate when it detects an admin user. It also delays execution when a web analytics service is found, presumably to not end up in the stats. What the fuck? What the actual fuck? Sorry, Googie anal Analytics. I thought that was Google. Yeah, it's easy to, to see this in your URL bar and not even notice. The original Polyfill author recommends to not use Polyfill at all, as it's no longer needed by modern browsers anyway. Meanwhile, both Fastly and Cloudflare have put up a trustworthy alternative if you do still need it. This incident is a typical example of a supply chain attack. To get visibility into the code that your users are loading, we recommend our free CSP monitoring service. Yeah, if these are writing about these things, they clearly are pretty deep in the know. Oh boy. Apparently, a low level is hanging out now because he heard we were talking about security stuff. Nation state malware server. Yep, almost certainly. Not surprised at all. Polyfill malicious payload example. We added some names for readability. However, Tio Zuan came from the original malware, which means jump in Chinese. So here we have the code that it runs when you load the page. Is Win, navigator.platform, Win32, or Windows. Is Mac, is Mac, all the different potential platforms that it could be. If Mac or Windows return true, else return false. Catch. <laughs> Fun naming for a variable here because it's all obfuscated to all fucking hell. If you ever wonder why there's variables like this in your JavaScript code, it's not because they're trying really hard to look like low-level engineers like our friend Low Level Learning here. Most people know what memory addresses are. They're just putting these to make it harder to read the code and using crazy obfuscation tools to make it hard to read the code. So the vfeed update function, if this thing that we're calling here is not equal to empty string, then we will load the JS for Googie Analytics HTML check cache HW. So this is an actual thing from Google Analytics, but they have this fake domain to make it less likely you notice. And if user cache is true, then we assign the window location href to this variable, which is the variable that defines the URL that we want to load instead. And then the check tiozun call is for checking if we should jump. We check if it's mobile, and if it's mobile, we grab the current host, the referrer for the document, the redirect URL, this URL that we want to send them to, a random number, date, and hours. And if a handful of these conditions are true, specifically you're not on one of these domains, we set this redirect URL. Otherwise, we send you to any one of these other URLs based on all of this additional pile of if statements. Absolute chaos. This is nuts. This is fucking nuts. Some of the indicators of compromise they pointed out here are these URLs. If you see any of these URLs being accessed from any of your services, you're compromised. Send out notice to your users. Get Polyfill out of your shit right now 
and jump on this because I'm sure a lot of people are getting pwned right now and don't even know it. It's surprising the story isn't bigger, both by the, the nature of how chaotic this stuff is, but also because people don't talk about a library and a service as old as Polyfill IO nowadays. People don't think about polyfilling anymore, which is why this is such a good attack. Thankfully, Cloudflare jumped on this a couple of days ago. They launched an alternative endpoint to Polyfill under CDNJS back in February. We strongly encourage immediate replacement of any remaining links to Polyfill with the CDNJS alternative endpoint. Our interest in creating an alternative endpoint was also sparked by some concerns raised by the community and main contributors following the transition of the Polyfill IO domain to a new provider. I bet this is the GitHub issue that they have purged. Yep, this issue has been deleted. They're trying so hard to cover this shit up. It's insane. Irrespective of the scenario described above, this is a timely reminder of the complexities and risks tied to modern web applications. As maintainers and contributors of CDNJS, currently used by more than 12% of all sites, this reinforces our commitment to help keep the internet safe. Apparently, you can actually deploy a Cloudflare worker to override any script tags that use the old domain automatically for you, which is not the worst solution if you don't own the HTML that you're serving but need to, to fix those things. Automatically replace Polyfill IO links with Cloudflare's mirror for a safer internet. Polyfill IO can no longer be trusted and should be removed from websites. Multiple pages corroborated with data seen by our own client-side security system, PageShield, have shown that the Polyfill service was being used and could be used again to inject malicious JavaScript code into users' browsers. This is a real threat to the internet at large given the popularity of this library. Over the last 24 hours, we've released an automatic JavaScript URL rewriting service that will rewrite any links to Polyfill IO found at a website proxied by Cloudflare to a link to our mirror under CDNJS. This will avoid breaking sites functionality while mitigating the risk of a supply chain attack. That's cool that they have just a checkbox you can click. I know I've bashed on Cloudflare a whole lot here, but I know a ton of you are using it. Being able to just hit a checkbox and get over this for now is huge. Apparently, this script tag still exists on Hulu.com. I want to confirm that quick. Let's grab the HTML. We're going to have to ask our favorite Hulu engineer, Primogen, to confirm this for us later. Cool. Well, yoink. Good old 10,000 lines of HTML. We love that. Yep. That's actually hilarious that Hulu is currently pwned at the moment. That's nuts. That's actually nuts. Holy shit. Hey, at Hulu, just so you know, you are currently compromised and a by including the polyfill.io domain, you are allowing a malicious third party to run whatever JS they want on all clients. You need to fix this ASAP. Doing my responsible disclosure of publicly tweeting, letting them know that one of the biggest websites on the internet is currently compromised. That's insane. That's actually insane. I can't believe this is real. Contrary to what is stated on the Polyfill.io website, Cloudflare has never recommended the Polyfill.io service or authorized their use of Cloudflare's name on their website. We've asked them to remove the false statement and they have, so far, ignored our requests. This is yet another warning sign they cannot be trusted. If you're not using Cloudflare today, we still highly recommend that you remove any use of Polyfill.io. Yep. They have a section on how they came to the decision. Back in February, the domain was purchased by an unknown company from China. They were concerned, so they spun up their thing. The new owner was unknown to the industry and did not have a track record of trust to administer a project such as Polyfill.io. This concern was highlighted even by the original author, pointing out that it could cause far-reaching security problems on the internet affecting several hundred thousands of websites, or it could be used to perform a targeted supply chain attack against specific websites. Yep, and this has now come true. Here's a bunch of the fake injected URLs they've been seeing from Googie Analytics specifically. Page Shield, our client-side security solution, is available on all paid plans. When turned on, it collects information about the JavaScript files being loaded by end-user browsers accessing your website. By looking at the database of detected JavaScript files, we immediately found matches with the IOCs provided above, starting as far back as 608. So that was October, that was June 8th. So it's been going on for almost a month now. Figure out where to squeeze this in, Faze. I'm so sorry. You'll make it work. I just got a link from Tali in chat that has a whole bunch of domains that are popular that actually use Polyfill.io, which includes the Xiaomi site, The Guardian, Weather.com, Telegraph, WebMD, The Verge, Xiaomi.net, Warner Brothers, ISO.org, WorldBank.org, Hulu, Vox, Texas.gov, Irish Times, NineGag. This is, this is terrifying. This is far too many domains. Don't tell me cloudflarestatus.com is using it. Do not tell me. Okay, they replaced it on their domain, thankfully. But previously, Cloudflare's status page had that. I want to go through their uh, archive org quick to see if I can find an old state where that was not the case. Let's go to May 1st. 
And then we'll go to January before this all happened for a good comparison. Yep. This is May 1st. They were still using Polyfill IO on Cloudflare status. That's hilarious. They built the service to redirect it somewhere better and then didn't on their own status page. That's actually really funny. June 1st, they were still using Polyfill IO. <laughs> June 18th, and we'll do the 24th. Cool. So June 24th. So literally just two days ago, they were still using Polyfill IO, the website, on their own things at Cloudflare. They were still serving the Polyfill IO URL that was exploited to their own customers. So that's just fucking both hilarious and showcases the severity of this issue. The fact that even Cloudflare, despite having an article, had the same problem. Whew. Terrifying. Yeah. And as chat pointed out, they didn't even pin it to a specific hash. So... Yeah, that was bad. Well, I'm terrified. You should be too. Go get Polyfill out of your services. And if you see somebody else with the service using it, make sure they know how bad this is because I'm terrified. Until next time, peace.